Well, hello and welcome back to Soul Search Sunday with Johnny Tiger. The date is March twenty fourth, twenty twenty four. But by the time you see this video, it will be March twenty fifth, a Monday.、Uh, because I actually I'm kind of surprised I made it.、Uh, it is eleven thirty p.m. I really didn't think I was going to get around to making this video today because it's just been a busy, busy day. Nothing out of the ordinary. Just a lot of things to do:、uh, house cleaning,、um, reading the mail.、Uh, for those of you that don't understand, or you you might not ever have thought about this, when you are a blind person living on your own. Reading mail is quite a serious and time-consuming undertaking, right? So, like, if you live with somebody that is sighted, like, let's say you live with your parents, or let's say you live with sighted roommates or uh, 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 friends or、uh, spouse, it's a little bit easier. Okay, you can just say, "Hey, here's a stack of mail. Is there anything important that I need to know? Can you guys, can you like just?" Go through them and let me know what these are. That that's a lot more simple.、Uh, but even then, even then, right? Even then, you might run into awkward situations where、uh, you might have something that you don't want them to see, and that is going to kind of put a, a, a bit of a cramp in your style. Like you 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 don't know what you're going to do with the. You know, trying to get them to help you with mails. I let、uh, just off the top of my head. For example,、uh, if you have、uh, some secret admirers writing you letters and you don't want your spouse to know, or if you have that gigantic credit card bill that you don't want your parents to see,、uh, you know this can become a very awkward situation very quickly. But when you live on your own, like me,、uh, then this becomes a very time-consuming proposition because、um, what I have to do is first I open up the uh, AI uh, photo description、uh, print reading software or app on my phone. Uh, make sure the light is on. Make sure that、uh, there's enough light in the room,、uh, and then I have to take the envelope and turn it this way and that way, and try to use the、uh, app to read what's on the envelope. Why am I doing that? Because I want to make sure that it's mine. It, this is mail for me,、uh, because I have me and my neighbors.、Uh, we kind of share the same mailbox, and it can be very awkward if I open something that belongs to them. Uh, so that alone, that process alone can take like sometimes ten minutes, fifteen minutes. Okay, now I determine、uh, which letters are mine, which letters are not mine.、Uh, I now grab my trusty pocket knife and open up the mail, and now I have to、uh, fire up the app again、uh, and try to aim it at the text so it will read it to me. Now this part is a lot more challenging than it may sound, because it is not just me holding the phone up to the paper and it will read it.、Uh, sometimes the light is too dim, or the wrong angle. Maybe my body is blocking the light, or maybe I have the phone too close to the text or too far away, and it will just read part of what's there.、Uh, and sometimes it will be garbled, garbled. Uh, message being read to me, and I have no idea what it said.、Um, or I might have the paper upside down. I might have the page、uh, turned the wrong way. So, long story short,、uh, just reading one piece of mail is basically a half an hour job. So you know that that basically can tell you if I get five pieces of mail. Uh, ten pieces of mail. Yeah, use your imagination. How tedious that's going to be. So. Yeah, when I say it's been a busy day, and part of that is because I had I had to open a bunch of mail and try to read them, that 
there is a lot more involved and complicated than it sounds. Now, speaking of something that a lot of more involved and complicated than it sounds, let's go back to our topic that I started last week, which is life of a blind action figure collector. This week, I'm going to talk about the cons, the bad things, the problems that are faced、uh, by being a blind action figure collector, and these are things that I'm not even I'm not even counting、uh, a little bit more abstract concept like. You know,、uh, disabled people generally don't、uh, find very good jobs, and、uh, a majority of disabled people are beneath poverty line. So for us to collect action figures is really hard because we don't have the money for it. I'm not even going to go into those, right? Like you, you can just use your own imagination and and、uh, think how difficult it may be. I'm going to、uh, talk a little bit more about the the, the obvious, the personal, the. Uh, uh, One that I experienced myself. Again,、uh, my experience is not necessarily going to be the same as the as the next blind collector. So, to, I'm not standing here and say this is how it is for every blind collector. I can only tell you my story. And you know, next time you guys talk to another blind collector,、uh, they may tell you something completely different from their own perspective,、uh, their own experience. Okay, so with that said, let's go. We're going to start with a big one. Okay, so number one, being a blind action figure collector is a very lonely、uh, pastime. I'm going to let that sink in for a second. Like I think,、uh, especially if you are yourself a collector, I would like.、Uh, To, for for that to sink in, for a blind collector, it is a very lonely hobby. Why do I say that? Because especially nowadays,、uh, most collectors enjoy this、uh, very tight knit, very、uh, interactive community.、Uh, this action figure community is wonderful. There's Facebook, there's Instagram, there's Twitter, there's YouTube. Uh, various uh, live stream and so on and so on and so on.、Uh, what do you enjoy in the community as a collector? You enjoy showing off your stuff. You enjoy showing off your display. You enjoy uh, uh, sitting together and look through、uh, the photos on the internet and then talk about those photos. What do you think of this? What does the other person think of this? You enjoy the debate. You enjoy the agreement. You enjoy the disagreement.、Uh, you enjoy looking at the other person's figure. What do they have? You enjoy looking at how do they display their figure? What kind of lighting they have? What kind of shelf they use?、Uh, what kind of poses they put their figures in, etc., etc., etc. You enjoy looking at. Oh wow! I didn't know there's that figure being made, and you enjoy learning from other、uh, collectors. You enjoy going to action figure convention, comic cons, and legions cons, and all those stuff where you can interact with people and look at all the different vendors. The majority of what I just described to you is not accessible to a blind collector. I can't go on Twitter and look at people's collection. I can't see. What they have, I, when people, even if someone say, "Hey Johnny, I just got a、uh, action figure of uh, uh, King Spawn from McFarlane," unless I already have one, I have no idea what you're talking about. Like I can ask you, so what is it like? How big is it?、Uh, is it the same body as the regular Spawn? Is it any good? I can ask you questions, but you know, I'm not. I'm still not going to be able to see. Uh, your display, your figure, how you pose it, and what it looks like,、uh, and this makes it a very sad and lonely experience being a blind collector. Yet there's such a big, tight knit community out there, but we are forever hovering on the fringe of that society.、Uh, have you ever been to a party where? You are invited, but you only know 
one person there, and that person is busy hosting the party, barely talks to you, and you are wandering around what and asking yourself, what am I doing here? I don't know any of these people. I don't know what they're talking about. They're all from the same company, but I am not even from the from the same line of work. Like you, you feel like such an outsider. You feel like uh 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 you're on the fringe of that. Crowd. Uh, being a blind collector is like that. I am unable to go to Comic Con unless I want to pay for someone sighted to go with me so they can describe things to me. I'm unable to go to Legion's Con uh, and, and see all the cool uh, Mythic Legion Four Horsemen creations in person. Uh, I, I'm unable to uh, hop onto Twitter and Instagram and comment on people's. Uh, displays and share ideas and stuff like that.、Uh, so,、uh, it, while a lot of collectors enjoy this great community experience, when you're blind, it's really a lot of time come down to me sitting at my desk or it's me standing at my display uh, doing uh, collecting and and and, and、uh, doing this myself. So yeah, yeah. Be a blind collector is a very lonely experience. Number two, another、uh, pretty big one, is when you're blind and、uh, being a blind collector, you do not get as much for your money as the other people. You do not get as much bang for your buck. As other people, now for some of you, you might not be able to understand this right off the bat. You might say, "What do you mean? You you buy a Batman figure, I buy a Batman figure. We are getting the same thing. So why? How can you say you don't get as much bang for your buck as as me just because you are blind?" Well, let me put it this way:、uh, when you buy a figure, it's not just about the figure, right? A lot of you you enjoy looking at,、uh, at the art on the box, right? You you look you like the backdrop inside the box. Some boxes come with diorama、uh, backdrop pieces、uh, that you can put behind your action figure.、Uh, some boxes have files and stories and stuff like that that on the back that you read and you can that show you、uh, what you can read up about the figure.、Uh, some of them even have things that、uh, come with stickers that you can put on things. And things with a barcode, and if you scan this with your phone, it shows you something really cool.、Uh, Jurassic Park action figure, all those dinosaurs by Mattel, for example, have those little barcodes that you scan with your phone, and it will give you the info of the dinosaur. None of these things are accessible to blind people. So, when I buy a figure, I get to enjoy the figure inside. That's about it.、Uh, I. It wasn't until very, very recently. That we even have the technology on our phone to be able to scan print material and have AI read it to us. So now I can try to scan the back of the box and get that bio and get get that story.、Uh, but remember what I was saying in the beginning: even scanning a piece of mail can take like half an hour. So for me to get that bio, for me to get that story. Sometimes it takes half an hour to an hour of messing around, trying to aim the phone in exactly the right angle that it's going to get the text. A lot of time, it it makes me so frustrated when I watch a YouTube review,、uh, and the reviewer will say, "Well, this got really cool text on the back here, but、uh, I'm not going to read it. I'm just going to pause here. If you want to read it yourself, you can pause the video here. I can't read that." So when when I come across that, I'm like, well, what about us? How, how about those of us that can't see it?、Uh, it? It's immensely frustrating. So yes, I understand that、um, it's no one's fault that I'm blind and I can't see these things. I can't enjoy the I can't enjoy the cool dioramas. I can't enjoy the cool backdrops. I can't enjoy the barcode and the stickers and the box art. But you know what? I'm still paying for it. All these things. It's where you, when you buy an action figure for twenty five bucks, let's just go with Hasbro pricing, twenty five bucks. It, you're not getting a twenty five bucks worth action figure, right? A lot of that money go toward packaging. A lot of maybe maybe a five dollar go to packaging, five dollar go to 
additional languages on the box, five dollar go to graphic design, whatever. They figure you actually get in your hand in the end it's probably what, ten bucks, eight bucks worth. Yeah? So so for the rest of you that actually can enjoy the graphic, the art, the all the cool stuff that come on the box, inside the box, all the printed stuff. Count yourself lucky, right? You are getting a bang for your buck. For me, I'm paying. I'm also paying twenty five bucks. But all I can enjoy, if at all, is that figure inside. I don't get to enjoy any of the additional printed materials, stories, and graphics, and all that cool stuff.、Uh, and this is even more apparent、uh, when I. Buy into Four Horsemen Studios. I'm just going to use Four Horsemen because I love horse Four Horsemen. You guys watch my toy Thursday. You know I highly endorse their action figures. But I'm going to say this: when I buy Four Horsemen、uh, stuff, a lot of time I feel left out. I feel ripped off because they put so much into their cool graphic design. A lot of those、uh, their pictures on the box is like. You know, works of art.、Uh, when you buy a sixty-dollar Four Horsemen、uh, figura obscura figure, it comes with this cool、uh, print material wrapped around the box and all that.、So、I only know that because I watch a lot of reviews and、uh, ask friends what the box looks like. Isn't that sad? That for me to even get part of the enjoyment, I have to ask a friend, "Hey, can you describe the box to me?" Yeah. You know,、uh, so being a blind collector means that you are paying the same amount as other people, but you're getting way less bang for your buck. Number three, being a blind collector means、uh, every time you buy something, it literally is a blind bag experience, for real. Like this sounds funny, right? And it's very obvious. But I don't know have you guys ever really sit down and think about the implication of this.、Uh, some of you can relate to this when I、uh, talk about the Hasbro、uh, plastic-free experience that we had with Hasbro、uh, action figure in the last couple of years. Okay, just a quick recap for those of you who are not. In the action figure collecting hobby, and you don't know what I'm talking about. So Hasbro, Hasbro is this、uh, the company that make Marvel superheroes and Star Wars and GI Joes. They're they've been around for a long time. I think most people know Hasbro, right? If you were a kid, you collected GI Joe or、uh, stuff like that. You you know Hasbro. So Hasbro,、uh, I don't know what got into their head a couple of years ago, and they tell people we are going to. Be、uh, environmentally,、uh, environment friendly. We're going to be conscientious of the environment. We're going to stop using plastic on our packages. So you can no longer see inside the box. Okay. So everything comes in this cardboard box that you don't know what you're getting. Like you can assume that you're getting the figure you want.、Uh, if you if you buy a a a, a Captain America, you can assume you you can assume you're getting a Captain America, but a lot of time, what people were experiencing was they open the box and it's a bar of soap or a toy car or something totally unrelated because someone、uh, already bought this figure, took it home, took the figure out, put a bar of soap in the box, and then returned it and get their money back from the store. Right. And the store didn't bother to double check, and then you come along thinking that, oh wow, there's one Captain America left. I've been looking for this Captain America for five years. I'm so happy. I, I I'm so happy. It's my holy grail. And then you get it home, and you open it up. It, it it's not Captain America. Okay, that that that's just an example. That I, I'm I don't know if that actually happened, but a lot of similar stuff happened, like that. And people were getting so frustrated because they don't, they can't see inside the box. They don't know what they're getting,、uh, and、uh, people were sometimes getting、uh, figures. It's a, it's a right figure, but it's my missing accessories or the paint. It's lousy. Yada yada yada. Go on and on. Finally,、uh, I think at the end of last year, Hasbro announced that they are going to bring back 
uh, clear uh, plastic on their packaging. So now you can see what you're getting. Right? Okay, so that is a little Hasbro boo boo that happened uh, in, in the last couple of years with a stupid uh, plastic free packaging stuff. For those of you that have complained about you can't see what you're getting, welcome to my world. Yeah, that, that has been my experience ever since I started collecting like 30 years ago. I never know what I'm getting. Like, I may think that I know what I'm getting. I may think, okay, this is the newest Spider-Man, but I don't know what all it comes with. I don't know what it looks like or feel like. I don't know if I'm going to like it. I think that is the biggest thing that might boggle people's mind is when I buy a figure a lot of time, I really don't know if I'm going to like it uh, until I finally open it and get it in my hand. And usually it's going to be like a, oh, is that it? And a kind of a bit of uh, sting of disappointment. Or, whoa, this is so much more cool than I thought it was. And those are great, great moments. Uh, those are really great, really good. Uh, good moments of wowness. I mean, the wow factor is wonderful. Um, so, when people talk about they hate the experience because they can't see what they're getting, when, when I pay good money, I should know what I'm getting. You know what? I pay the same money you pay, and I never know what I'm getting. Uh, so many times, it the, the, I can tell you so many disappointing experiences. I, I get a figure and uh, uh, people say it's so wonderful and then I get it in my hand and it feels like cheap $2 action figures from the uh, dollar store or stuff like that. Uh, I'm not going to like, you know, give all the <laughs> examples, but you know, uh, it, it, it's too many times, too many times. And, and a lot of time it's no one's fault, but mine because I went and bought it on the assumption that oh wow it's a figure of Shredder and everyone said it looked really cool so it must be really really good because I want the Shredder figure on my shelf and then it turned out to be just not very appealing. Uh, I, I also get tricked into uh, buying into the uh, Castlevania uh, Diamond Select figures uh, by a friend I'm still annoyed about that because my friend said, oh, did you know they make Castlevania figures? And I think they will be really awesome. They come with a whole lot of accessories. And I should have known better, right? Like I've been collecting for a long time. I know Diamond Select usually don't make super good figures. And I was skeptical, but because my friend told me that they look like they should be really good, I went and bought them and oh my God, they're like, Disappointment. I'm not going to review them here, but let's just say that was $80, $100 I wish I could have saved. Uh, so, yeah, being a blind collector really, really sucks sometimes. You open the box, and at the moment of truth, you may get pleasantly surprised, or a lot of time you get dreadfully disappointed. Mm. Number four, and this is going to be the last one. There's actually a lot more I can talk on this topic, but I don't want to be here for the rest of the evening. And I don't want to, because this is really a little bit depressing. It's going to make it sound like some people are going to think, wow, if it's this bad, why would you collect? Well, if you want to know why I collect, go and watch the last video. But, uh, you know, next video, I'm going to talk about the pros, the good, the good things about being a blind collector. Um, there, there are there, there are a lot more that I can talk about, but I'm going to cap it off at four. So number four, uh, when you are a blind collector, the idea of buying a new action figure, especially anything too complex, is very daunting. Uh, it, it's very scary, because guess what? I, I already talked about we can't I can't see the box art. I can't see the cool graphic. I also can't read the instruction manuals. Uh, so this is, this is why, even though I love Lego, uh, I love uh, some Transformers, I don't buy them. Because if, if, I, if I get a box of Lego, let's say a pirate ship, 
Uh, okay, let's say I get that home. I never, I wouldn't know how to even begin to put that together. I'll have to call a friend and uh, and and buy them dinner and get them to put it together for me. Uh, because I can't read the instruction. I don't know which color goes with which color, which block goes where. Uh, if I buy a transformer, uh, most likely I wouldn't even know how to transform it. I wouldn't know how to which part's supposed to bend, which way, which panel is supposed to open uh, and, and, and stuff like that. Most likely uh, I'll try to do it and I'll break the new figure and I'll be really mad at myself. Right? Uh, so buying a new figure that is complex can be very daunting when you're blind and you don't know how it's supposed to fit together, how where things are supposed to go. Uh, I'll give you guys a couple of examples that these are things I really wanted, but I skipped them because I knew that I wouldn't know how to put them together. Uh, number one is that new, uh, the thing creature from NECA that they just came out uh, last year, I think November, uh, November of 2023, is from the thing movie. Um, and I actually had that figure on pre-order. And then when I st when it first started coming out, I watched. I was so excited. I watched YouTube reviews, and then I quickly went and canceled my pre-order after I watched the reviews because I was seeing even you sighted folks. So many of so many collectors were having problem figuring out which part was supposed to go where. And Kim was like, I don't know, something like a hundred pieces. Um, it's almost like a big jigsaw puzzle. Uh, and if you plug something in the wrong way or, or uh, you don't know which thing go where, things snap and break, that just sounds like a nightmare to me. And I'm not even saying that, you know, in a good way. I mean, yeah, it, it's a monster. It's a creature from the thing. So it's supposed to be a nightmare. But it's not. I, I'm not looking for that kind of uh, uh, assembly nightmare, right? Especially when I can't even read any kind of instruction. And a couple of reviews I've seen on YouTube, uh, the reviewers did put it together on video, but it didn't help me because they basically said, you take this piece and look, there's a hole over here and you plug it over here and that other piece go over here. And then you pull this one off and then there's, there's a hole over here. Like, oh, this over here and over there. It doesn't show me, it doesn't tell me what goes where. Uh, so I had to sadly cancel the pre-order on that one because it, it just didn't seem very doable uh, as a blind collector. Uh, another another piece that I really, really wanted was a street diorama scene uh, from, also from NECA. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not picking on NECA. I'm I, I love NECA as a company. I talk about this in Toy Thursday. If you want to ask me which toy line that you can buy from the uh, aisle in Walmart and uh, stores, uh, which one is the best bang for your buck? I'll tell you it's NECA, okay? There are Dungeons and Dragons, there are Aliens, there are Predators, there are, uh, uh, there are Gargoyles. They make awesome stuff, okay? But a lot of their awesome stuff are very complicated. The street scene diorama. I really wanted that thing. I, I, and again, I looked at the review. I looked at actually five reviews, and every review just make you know, make me feel like I can't do this. It, it's got all these panels and switches and pegs and things that have to be put this uh, here and clip on there and and uh. uh this thing have to face this way, that thing have to face that way. Again, it sounds like it's coming out like a hundred pieces and without being able to see what people are doing or read the instruction manual, there's no way I would be able to put that together. I would, again, I would have to beg a couple of friends to come over and help me with it. Now, these are the big things. I <laughs> think are the big things that some people may say, well, yeah, but these are out, like you just named two very complicated pieces, so that's not that that's normal that you will feel overwhelmed. It's not just those things, okay? Sometimes just little things can be very overwhelming and and uh, frustrating. Uh, I just uh, logged my um, shipwreck 
action figure from Hasbro, the G.I. Joe classified shipwreck. I just finished uh, taking photos of that. Was it last week? Uh, I made a short video on that. You guys can find it. Uh, just go back and look at my short videos. Uh, and Shipwreck comes with his pet parrot, Polly. I knew uh, from reading reviews and watching review videos that Polly could sit on the rope that Shipwreck draped over his shoulder, that there's a peg on Polly's foot that peg into the knot on the rope. Okay, that part was easy. What I didn't know was that Polly can fit on his wrist. So you can pose the parrot sitting on his wrist. I only found that out by chance reading a review on the internet and the reviewer mentioned it. But here came the frustrating part. The reviewer said you can uh, attach the parrot either to his shoulder on the rope or to his forearm. And as soon as I heard that, as soon as I read that, I grabbed the shipwreck action figure. I'm like, forearm, where? And the hole is very small. It's close to the wrist joint. So it's not something that you can touch it with your finger. You can, and it's not something that you can feel with your finger by feeling the forearm of the action figure. So what I ended up having to do was grab a toothpick and carefully, so I didn't wouldn't scratch off all the paint, carefully uh, go over the forearm of the action figure, centimeter by centimeter, using the toothpick, until I finally found the hole where you can peg the parrot into. Yet that whole process took 45 minutes, almost 50 minutes. It's crazy frustrating. Uh, sometimes when even just a simple thing like how do how do you attach the parrot to the arm can be very frustrating, very daunting. So uh, yeah, now, I hope that uh, this episode gives you a deeper view into my world as a blind action figure collector, all the tribulations and trials and woes that uh, I have to go through. Next episode, sorry, um, got a little bit of a uh, dry throat there. Next episode, we'll end this series on a positive note, and I'll come back and talk about some of the uh, positive things of being a blind collector. Thank you for checking out this episode. And if you want to, if you ever, if you, you guys ever got questions on what is like being a blind collector of action figures or weapon collector or martial artist or any anything you don't be shy hit me up in the comment section and i'll answer your question okay for now have a good night